Hello YouTube, so I thought I would do a second review on this um, roughneck saw. Part of the reason why was because I wasn't that happy with it before in terms of the flexibility of the blade, which was the main reason why I think the cutter performance was down a little bit. Um, it was kind of going off at a right old angle and equally I was using quite a large piece of wood to demonstrate the cutting power to you. Um, so what I've done is I've bought one of these which is a, a kind of tightening grip tool. I've got one already which is very straight um, kind of leather or plastic plastic um, strap which would never work but obviously I saw this on uh, Amazon which has a grip to it so I thought I'd give it a go and I've already tightened it I'll show you in a second how to do that um, and obviously these extra kind of um, noggins I suppose fit quite nicely in here and I've only got one here because this is probably the one that needs tightening the most because it's a large bow saw and has the worst grip it's like a plastic grip it's really hard to get the adequate grip, the adequate um, tension on there. As I showed you before, the uh, the leverage system of the other um, bow saw I thought was more superior. But in actual fact, although I still don't think this is very good, uh, you probably get more tension on this because there's no limit to what you can tension. Whereas with the other one, you have to you get you get how it's engineered. Um, so I still don't think it's a great design. You know, it's a really good saw. It feels really nice in the hand. All it would have required is like a nut there or something with a hole to put a screwdriver through. And then you can get insane amounts of tension. So the reason why they've chose this, um, I'm not quite sure, because it wouldn't have taken much just to get a bigger grip on the edge or something metal or something to put a tool on. Um, I don't want to put a tool on there that's going to damage it. You know, some mold grips or some any kind of grips would tighten that easily, but it damaged the plastic. So this didn't cause any damage whatsoever and, uh, and turns it with no problem whatsoever. Now it's quite hard to do one hand, but as you can see here, the strap goes up and around back through again and really it's, it's these noggins that help turn it it's very hard to do with one hand but essentially if I turn that that turns and tightens it quite nicely um, I'll have to show you back when I'm back at home when I've got a um, hands-free camera to show you how that works um, same as any other kind of grip device but this one just got those little no nodules in it um, so I've already pre-tightened it to as far as I think it needs to go and I think I'll just show you on a smaller bit of wood the difference it makes Okay, so I've got the um, saw set up to a really good tension, probably about equal if not more than the previous saw I showed you. So a smaller bit wood and I'll show you the cutting power. for that kind of size wood uh, it's nice dry wood went through pretty easy so I could do that all day long to be honest don't really need a chainsaw for that the last bit of wood I showed you was probably a bit too big but that felt a lot better the uh, the blade wasn't being as flexible as it was before so it felt as good as my last saw so really as you can see with these things it's all about how much tension you can get on the blade so that now I can turn it a little bit it's just not ideal Having some sort of grip on that would make all the difference. So even after tightening up the blade, I'm still finding that the cuts aren't very straight. Now, when I've done a lot of cutting before, I've done a smaller saw, um, and I remember my larger orange saw was being very similar. So it could just be that this is the larger saw, uh, but I'm still finding the same kind of problems. The cut won't be straight. It then kind of squeezes and nips the blade. You have to rotate the wood. It makes it a lot, a lot of effort. <clears throat> so it'd be nice to kind of get a design that eliminates all of that, where you can have a larger blade, it cuts straight, and just kind of you know, performs as best as a saw of this design can perform. Um, I can't think what that would be. I mean, I have tightened up as much as I can. It could just be a thicker blade, maybe. Um, something to research. But, you know, I think my final conclusion, it's okay. I mainly got this for the grip. Other than that, it's just a fairly standard bow saw. Um, I think there's definitely some improvements. You know, a thicker blade and a decent um, turn grip at the end would make all the difference. And this saw then would be as best as it can be. It might be um, 
that at some point I might remove this and try and put my own little device on there. I don't want to do it now because I want to pull it off and decide to just and discover that I can't do anything with it. But I'm wondering whether this could just pull off and whatever's on there could be welded on or you know, I don't know, screwed on or something, and then you actually kind of adapt it and then it comes into its own obviously with a new blade. But um that's my full report really. I mean whilst it's where it is, I'll see if I can show you this device, I mean, you can use any old thing to tighten up, but it's just quite a nice little grip, really, that I've got. Um, as you can see, it kind of goes up, loops through. You pull it as tight as you can, albeit it's not perfect because the first part isn't isn't grippy. But as long as you get it quite tight and you get those nodules in there, and then, well, I can't do it one hand, but you turn it, you then can get a nice turn on it without damaging it. So it's a nice little grip, only about £9 from Amazon. Um, and I've actually tried it on some other things, this is quite good actually, because the other ones you get are just a rubber strap. And they're, they're pretty good, but they can slip. Obviously this is rubber and it's and it's got these nodules, so there's nothing that they won't slip on. And this is the 9 inch one, you can get 12 and 15 inches. So it's just like a nice little simple device. The other ones you get are really big handles, I wanted something small and again metal, so it lasts for a long time. It feels pretty good. So this is actually designed for an oil filter. Nothing else really, but you know you can use it for anything. So that's it really. Um, saw's okay. Definitely not the best out there. Um, but for what 14 quid, not too bad. So a bit of an update. When I was trying to tension um, the end of this saw with this, as I've shown you previously, um, and obviously I said that you know at one point I might take off the end to see what I could do, but I won't for now. Uh, it actually popped off. So it's interesting because it is quite tight on i imagine what they've done is they put it on hot and then it kind of congeals and hardens around oh i think it's quite tough um it hardens around the end now the strange thing is it's just a circle so there's like a little cap in there there's an indentation this is obviously damaged because i've been trying to do some work on it um there's a bit of plastic in there so i imagine this goes on hot or glued but i didn't see any glue on it it goes on hot pushes on it congeals and sticks in there but you're still rotating it so you're not going to get a lot of force on that and you probably don't need a lot of force but i was thinking that i wasn't getting enough tension on the blade so i've obviously pulled that off now i could just glue that back on but i end up with the same saw or i use this as an opportunity to try and um, improve it so i've been thinking of different ways to as you can see here to improve it I was hoping it'd be square at the end. So there's a little in there. There's a screw. So I think all four all four saws operate this way. So it's threaded on that end. That goes in there. This is open, and then just screws on. So I'm pretty much committed to using this. I think if it was the other way around and there was a screw this end, I could get a screw and, and adapt it and, and make some sort of component. But it'd be harder to make something like this. I'd have to buy a bit of metal, drill it, thread it. So I'm, I think I'm stuck with this, which is not the end of the world. So what my plan is, I am going to try and adapt this and make it better, is discard, discard this. And I'm going to use, I bought this a while ago. It's a work zone, quite cheap um, threading kit. I haven't used it yet. Essentially, all do the same thing. I don't think I've actually. No, I've used it once actually. I have used it once in one of my son's toys. Um, a wheel fell off one of his little cars, and I threaded the new one back on. Um, but other than that, I haven't used it since school. So I'm going to use this this kit here, and I'll show you when I'm doing that. To put a little thread on the end, I put a nut on. Now that's going to work in terms of doing it up because when I put the th the, the nut on it's going to get to a certain point and it won't turn anymore and then it will just turn the whole device so i could put a lot of force on that not that i need to put a lot of force on it but it'd be nice to have a bit more control the issue will be when i take it off because i'll naturally start undoing the nut so i thought could i glue the nut in and i think i've decided to solder it in now solder isn't the, the strongest weld but it doesn't need to be crazy strong but it's going to be stronger than glue i imagine i'm not positive of that but having a quick look online and it can be used as an adhesive it's obviously you know low melting point and you know it adheres to metals quite easily so we'll give that a go i mean whether that sticks or not we'll see you know we've always got the option of the glue if that doesn't work but um i think my first is to thread it put a nut on so i've got some work out what kind of size nuts we need and then once that's on 
take the whole thing out because obviously I melt the handle, and then I will um, solder it on. So we've got to work out what kind of thread we need. It's going to be something like, hopefully that. So what you'll see is a nut at the end, and then I'll probably leave it like that and just use a a um, spanner to do it up. I mean, I could put something on top of that, but I think that will work quite nicely. So that is the plan. Um, just whilst I've got these tools out, when I was trying to get this out, and I will do a review, I've been getting into my more expensive tools recently. I've got a whole load of quite cheap tools, as you can tell from work zone. You know, they have, you get them from Audi and things. They do have their purpose because they're cheap, but um, it's nice to have tools that are a bit more robust and you have less of them, but more, more, um, quality kind of items. So I've been getting a lot of Nipex stuff recently, and I'll do a review of all my Nipex stuff. This is quite a cool one where you push and you can open up the jaws. Um, I've used it twice now to get a screw out of the wall and obviously to open this out. Now that you know, you could open that with anything, but this is actually designed for that. As you can see, the teeth um, it grips that way as long as uh, in the same sideways. Normally that would be flat there. And that had a really good grip on there. And as you can see there, like the handle's a bit too large there. So what you do is you open it up. Still too large. Halfway. So that's the closing. And you can get a smaller grip there. And that grip's like, you never get a stronger grip than that. So that's good. So I'm probably going to do a review of my Nipex tools at some point. But anyway, for now, that is my next plan. So my next plan is to put a thread on there. I think it only goes in so far. So the thread will be to about there. And then put some solder on. Yeah, so the thread would be about to there. So if you see, this goes on. It is pretty tight. I mean, it probably would work just gluing it. But I want to give this a go anyway. So what I have to be careful of is, is seeing how far I thread down. So if I put this stick in and then place, it is pretty much hollow the whole way. So I was hoping it would be hollow to about to about there. But it's hollow the whole way. So what I don't want to do is, is thread it too small and open it up. But in terms of the thickness, I think that would be okay to receive a thread on the outside. Essentially, they'll have a thread on the inside and the outside. Um, I only want to take off a little bit of the metal. So that should still be okay. Um, so I'm still going to press on with plans. Now it's looking like I'm going to have to start off with an M12 because the M10 is too small. Uh, my only issue is going to be is that I think that'll be fine, but when I get to the indentation there, it might be that's going to take it down a notch. But I might be able to get away. Well, no, I think the thickness of these bolts show that the thread will have to be longer. So if it comes down to it, I can do the M12 and then go down to an M10, um, but we will see. So I'm in my workshop, which is uh, my loft space. I've got a little vice here that I'll just put the, um, the little gubbins in. Uh, the reason I've got this is I don't want to mark it. It doesn't really matter, but I prefer that it doesn't get any marks on it. Um, giving it a spray. And I've just about got this M12 on. Um, from school, from memory, I haven't done this for quite a while. The most important part is I get it on straight because it will cut it no problem. If you do it at an angle, then the nut's going to go at an angle. So spend some time trying to get it as straight as possible. So there we go, I think we've got it. <clears throat> um, it cut the mess with no problem. It's quite hard to get it straight at first, but it's kind of evened itself out. So um, that is all the way down. It's just weather. I haven't actually taken it off yet. We've gone all the way down to the deepest part we want. Quite happy to see whether it's, um, it's put a, a thread on that groove. So let me have a quick look. I think that should be okay, it looks like. So, I will be looking at getting... 
an M12 nut and seeing how we do. If that doesn't work, then we'll go down one. But for now, it all seems good. So from closer inspection, I don't think we've quite hit that groove. Oh. You can see that little line in the middle. So that is obviously where that groove is. And yeah, a nut might go on there, but I'd, actually, I'd have to actually go out and buy an M12 nut. So I think I'm gonna go down one more to get a nice thread and then use the nut I've already got. Right, so we can't use the M10 because it's too much of a jump. So I've got the M10 in there. Uh, and go from M12 to M10, it's just not. I mean, number one, it's so small, I think that would cut into the pipe too much. So M12 seems to be the way to go. But equally, going from an M12 to an M10, you can't do it anyway. I mean, you have to go from the bottom there. So you, as you can see with these things, the teeth are wider at the bottom and they get narrower, so obviously they slowly progress with that cut. So when you get them, uh, the actual indication of how large they are uh, goes on the bottom, so you cut like that. So the smaller teeth are at the top. But that's so small there, the M10, compared to that. If you look at that size difference, um, it would be too small, that would cut right into it. So we're going to stick with the M12. I think because the M12 turns on it, I think we'll be fine. Obviously, that indentation is is uh, is lower, lesser than the actual teeth. So, if this turns on it, I'm hoping the bolt will, and we're going to weld that bolt on anyway. So it doesn't matter that it looks like a half job. Um, we've got what we've got. Um, I guess maybe an M11 could do it, but I don't want to go and order that just for this one job. So I'm going to try the M12 bolts first and see how we do. So I managed to find these star nuts in the end, which I think is a lot better than having a nut at the end, which will give me the torque I need. What I found is a real, real struggle, having not done much tapping and dying before, it's really hard to get a straight tap on it. So I did this end, um, which looks a bit crude, but obviously it's just the way that it does it. And there's like an indentation there, which I showed you earlier, which the plastic sets in. Um, that hasn't really caused much problem, it does go in. But when I did the tap, um, you can kind of see that it goes at an angle um, and once you start it off at an incorrect angle it's impossible to correct it and it's really hard to get it set up straight obviously on a machine it's not too bad imagine with a bit of skill but um, it's really hard, tough to do so but what I'm going to do rather than weld it I've used this stuff before which is um, steel stick which has got extremely strong bonding 900 psi power um, so if I put some of that it's a putty it's, a, it's an epoxy putty put that inside that will um, that will seal it tight so obviously if I'm doing it up the threads will keep it tight but when I'm undoing it it'll just undo at the end so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to cut the top of this off now um, put some putty in and get it as straight as possible and then there's my new attachment for back that's it cut off Now this um, steel, steel stick is really good stuff. It's two part hardener and obviously the other part, that's what it is. Um, it's like an epoxy um, putty, not a resin. I've used it before and it's extremely strong. It basically replaces low level welds. So I'll cut a little bit of that off, mix it together, put it into the uh, star nut and then tighten this up until I'm happy that it's straight and then that should be that. So you just mix it together like that and then once this goes in it's never coming out if this doesn't work essentially that'll be ruined so you'd never get this out so get it in there. so that's completely full now and then I'm going to twist this in so it's only been about five minutes and you can see this is well it's almost set already um, so you only have a short amount of time to work with it. That's not set in terms of its um, maximum strength, but it's you know you wouldn't be able to work with that anymore. So it ends up being like a really really firm plastic. So I can't squeeze that at all. So that is as straight as I can get it. I've realised obviously you need quite a lot of practice with these tap and dies to get them straight. Cause that did cause me a few problems. Um, so I might have a look at a few videos how to do that. Whether you just kind of give it a tap at the top or you just have to spend a lot of time trying to get it even. But I'm fairly happy with that. Um, once that's 
all set, I'll show you the finished product. But we've basically gone from that, or from this little thing, that's really hard to get any grip on, to that. Which they should have just done in the first place, to be honest. So yeah, I'll show you when it's all finished. Right, so that's not worked, which I'm quite surprised about, because this stuff is really good stuff. But thinking about it, what I've done in the past, joining two bits of metal, you wrap it around, and then it, it it's solid. I mean, you can see, it is rock solid, that. Yeah, really solid. But what happened is that when I was cleaning this up, it was still spinning. And what's obviously happened is that inside, it's obviously gone inside there, but the actual, there's just not enough gap between the threads to kind of cause it to bond. And it's not really that kind of glue. It's more of like a, a clay that clamps around two bits of metal rather than actually sticking to them. You can get JB Weld, which is a glue, but I don't want to start spending loads of money on this. Um, so I've got a few other glues I might try. Um, that obviously didn't work. It's just not enough gap between the threads to, to kind of stick it. Um, so I have a plastic weld, which obviously meant for plastic, but it is pretty firm. So whether that would do the job, but um, back to the drawing board. So I've re-threaded this um, little gubbings, um, which um, I'd actually done the wrong side of it before. Um, and it's very, very hard to get the tap and die completely straight. So when it went in, it went at a bit of an angle. Um, I had a little look on YouTube and there is a technique for it where if you put it in a, a pillar drill, you hold this in the pillar drill and then push down and just with your hands, just turn it to get that bite. Um, as you can imagine, it's a complete 90 degree angle. And as soon as you get that bite, you then take it off, put it in a vise and then do it by hand. And it's worked perfectly. Um, I managed to get a completely straight thread. It's just about getting that initial bite and then you can take it out. Um, so it's a bit fiddly at first, but you know, once once you get one revolution, then the tap and die will just take you down straight. So on this side, it was at an angle, um, and you have to be very experienced or just take a long time trying to set it up. But the um, having it in the pillar drill was perfect. I can imagine 90 degree angle. So this will screw in there perfectly straight, but when obviously I undo it, it would un undo. So I'm going to use this uh, JB weld. Obviously, the last stuff I used uh, wasn't quite up for the job. Very very, very strong but wasn't very good at adhering metal to metal in a glue type fashion. It would kind of, it would contain it as a ball and it's very, very strong that way. Uh, if it had to kind of wrap round like a weld, for example, but inside it just didn't do anything. So I've had a little look at this and this is uh, extremely strong. I've seen some people do some reviews. So it is for metal on metal. 3,127 PSI is the strength. Sets in six minutes in epoxy resin. So it's got a um, the resin and the hardener. Um, so what I'm going to do is put, some of that in there, screw this in, and then that'll be that. This might be a rough copy because obviously it's been a bit mangled now, but you can buy these pretty simply, pretty easily on eBay. But um, that should work. It'll be threaded in, and then the glue will stop it unthreading. It was only glue in the first place. Um, or, so for tightening and loosening, it was only glue in there. But obviously it's going to be a bit of an upgrade. So we'll see what we get. So here's a two-part epoxy resin. Should be about enough. It turns into a grey mix. So it's been a good 15 hours now, and with um, this JB Weld, you only need um, six hours for it to fully cure. Six minutes to dry initially, but it's six hours to fully cure. Um, so, um, as you can see, I've done the uh, tap and die. Uh, that technique with the pillager really did work. Um, I think it's almost impossible to get it straight without that by hand, unless you're you know, a seasoned professional, but happy with the level there. But um, what that does is that when I'm tightening it, um, it would be rigid, but obviously when I'm undoing it, it would start to loosen. So you do need the glue in there. Um, this is kind of like a rough one, really. So if this does work, you can buy these, and I'm going to make sure uh, it's all nice um, and finished. 
this should be the right length, but I've cut a bit off already. Obviously, I, I um, put the thread on the wrong end initially, um, but this is kind of a bit of a test. Um, so we'll see. So I'm going to use this a bit later today. I'm going to put this on now and see if it makes much difference from the old handle, which was just not up to standard at all. So it's a lot easier to turn now. You can get a lot of force on that compared to this little thing. And there is a limit to how much force you do need because um, all you're going to do by, by forcing it is put a lot of tension on all the um, aspects here. But essentially this bow will just kind of bend. Um, but it's just a lot easier to turn and get the tension you need. I mean, it, it wasn't at the right tension with this. You just couldn't put much more force on it. And when I did, I broke it. So it's definitely an improvement. And we'll see if it makes a difference a bit later. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's already under a lot of tension and it's just one-handed, easy as anything. What I do want to do at some point as well is do a review on different glues. I do find, weirdly, a bit boring, but I do find glues quite fascinating about how strong they can be these days. I mean, you can get glue that, and epoxy resin that's almost as strong, it feels as strong as concrete. Um, so I do actually want to do a review at some point. This arrow die, I wasn't very happy with this. It is very strong glue, but it's really old this, so I imagine it's gone off. I think I was using this one. Um, I don't know if it does go off, but um, it's really rubbery, and it's, this should be quite a strong plastic. Um, so um, what I might do is buy a selection of new glues. They are quite expensive, though, and test them out. This is amazing for plastic and for fixing um, kids' toys. Obviously, this would be yet to see how good this is, but I've seen some reviews online. Uh, for metal, and apparently this is incredible. But so far, so good. So you've got the. Uh, this is fairly standard. I've not been overly impressed with Gorilla Glue. Um, obviously, these are just brand names. They're all the same kind of thing, really. Obviously, super glue's all right, but. So I've taken the end off, and there's the finished piece. Used a bit of a file, just kind of neating the edge up, and that should be that. So um, I know um, some wood only chopping up, so I'll show you a bit later to see if there's any difference in the performance, and we will see. Now this was uh, very much a test, as you can see, I've tried different things. Some things worked, some things didn't. And um, in my testing, obviously I've cut off quite a lot of the of the um, the actual thread, the actual bolt, which means it doesn't really kind of go too far down, which is fine, but um, I'm going to make another one with a longer bolt because obviously I could use this second hole which pulls it that way. And if I do that, I can get even more tension on the bow, but this actually, this isn't actually long enough now to catch that thread. So I will making another one, and obviously with that video I'll show you how to do um, a straight tap and die using the pillar drill. Um, so I've got three more of these. I've got some more of these uh, threaded tubes are, um, on order, on order. Um, and I'll do quite a good video to show you how to do that threading obviously to see if the extra tension makes any difference. So I hope you like this video. Was, um, I kind of used it as an opportunity to do a slightly longer video this time and review the various tools and glues and things that I use. Um, I quite like the idea of um, doing some videos and obviously kind of going through the, the thought process and the design process and what tools I use and things that work and don't work. Um, so long story short really i mean these bows are okay i think when you use a chainsaw you realize the, the amount of power involved in a chainsaw and, and the amount of effort you would need to kind of get anywhere near that um i think bow saws are good for smaller cuts they all tend to be a little bit flexible on the blade uh, no matter how hard you tension the, the blade i think there are rooms for improvement with some um, i'd actually don't like the design of this one i prefer to have one with the leverage behind but um this this grip is definitely an improvement and i quite enjoyed the process and you know learn a bit more practice learning how to tap and die and using my various tools and going for the whole process um this this bit of wood here is probably the exact kind of thickness you need for a bow so anything bigger just takes so much effort and you can get through them but it just takes so much effort um but you know it's kind of hard to criticize a bow saw really because they're so they're so simple um, you know, there's a few little things that you could argue need improvement here and there, but it's essentially it's a piece of metal that tensions a blade. They're always going to be flexible on the blades. 
They're all pretty much as sharp as each other. Um, the only thing I could think could make it a bit, a bit more um, straight cutter would be a thicker blade, but they don't really exist, to be honest, they're all the same. Um, but I hope you like this video, and um, I'll see you for the next one. I think my next video is going to be either um, learning how to, or teaching how to tap and die straight, I want to do a video on different glues, and also I've got a fairly good selection of Nipex tools now, and you saw one of them today. I'm going to do a review on that. So see you for the next video.